Hi, welcome to your lesson, your eight on straight line graphs. Okay, following on from your coordinates work on Monday. Okay, when we say straight line graphs, um, I mean a graph for joining X and Y, sort of like an algebra graph, if you like, related to algebra, not a graph of how many cats or dogs people own. Okay, so. These are going to be like mathematical algebra graphs with x's and y's where the axes are x and y. Okay, so like you did with the coordinates where the x-axis goes across and the y-axis goes up and down. Okay, and what I'd like to put in your books is this little sentence before we start. Okay, so when we draw a graph of math, we are joining together lots of coordinates that are following the same rules. Okay, so that's quite important. If you follow a rule for your coordinates, then you don't just get like random coordinates all over the place. They generally tend to form a shape. Okay, now the shape we're going to do today is called straight line graphs. So our coordinates will join up to make a perfect straight line. Okay, um, you can get rules where they make a nice curve. You can get ones that wobble over the place. I mean, you could even make circles if you follow quite complicated rules for X and Y. Okay, but. To get that rule, what we generally tend to do is follow an equation like you did in year seven. Okay, so I'll, if you haven't printed out the sheets of graph paper, because the quickest thing we do would be to print these things, stick them in and write on them. But if you haven't, you're going to be drawing quite a few sets of axes in today's lesson. So you're going to need to pause the video and draw axes. Okay, so X and Y axis nice equal spacing on your axes if you want to double space it you can do okay we don't have to as long as you, all your spacings are equal okay so if i just put some coordinates in a row then so i'll go there and there and there and there and there and there okay and i join them up with the line because that's what a graph is. It's lots of coordinates joined up with a line. So the line goes across there, so it's perfectly horizontal. What rule have I followed for those coordinates? So I've got minus 6, 4, minus 4, 4, minus 3, 4, 0, 4, 2, 4, 4, 4, and 6, 4. Okay, what rule have I followed? Well, the rule is it doesn't matter what the first coordinate is as long as the second coordinate is a 4. Okay, so look, we had minus 6, 4, minus 4, 4, minus 3, 4, 0, 4. The rule was for those coordinates, it doesn't matter what the first number is, the second number is always 4. And if you remember back to coordinates, I said that the first number is your x number, it tells you to go across, okay, left or right. And the second number is your y part of the coordinate, which is your up and down number. So for those coordinates in that line there, the rule is, is that the y part is always 4. And what we would say then is that y equals 4. Okay, would be the actual mathematical name of that line, that y equals 4. So it doesn't matter what x is. If y always equals 4, you get a straight line going across the page. And I can do another one. Look, if I do it in a different colour. If I went across there, and I can put some coordinates on, but I don't have to show the individual coordinates, but look like there, 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 there. What do all of those coordinates have in common? Well, the second part of those coordinates is always minus 2. So the y part is always minus 2. So the name of that line would be y equals minus 2. Okay, so there, that's what a horizontal line looks like y equals a number if y equals one it would go across there through one okay so that's one sort of very straightforward line a horizontal line okay so get that in your books when you're ready you'll need a new set of axes this time i'm going to make a vertical line so i'll do it in red i'm going to have a vertical line that goes there okay and I'll put some coordinates on it. So here's some coordinates on that line. Now, what do all of these coordinates have in common? Well, I've got 3, 6, 3, 2, 3 minus 1, 3 minus 5, and 3 minus 6, 
what do they have in common? The first bit of the coordinate is always 3. The second bit is changing, of course. But the first bit of the coordinate, the x part of the coordinate, is always 3. So the name of this line would be x equals 3. Okay, so when we was horizontal, it was y equals a number. When it's vertical, it's the x equals a number. And I can put one on the other side in the minuses. If I went straight down there, all the coordinates on that line have something in common. The first part of the coordinate is minus 5. If I go there, it's minus 5, 6. If I go there, it's minus 5, 1. If I go down here, it's minus 5, minus 4. What do they have in common? The rule is, is that the x number is always minus 5. Okay, so that's horizontal lines and vertical lines. Okay, so they're straightforward. You don't have, you don't have to do any maths, really. Just lots of coordinates that share either the same first number, if it's x equals, or they share the same second number, if they're y equals. Okay, now the next ones I want to show you are diagonal lines. So if I did this, 0, 0, 2, 2, 3, 3, 5, 5, and I can even go down here, minus 2, minus 2, minus 4, minus 4, minus 6, minus 6. Do you know what all of those coordinates have in common? What rule are they all following? Okay, I'll write them down again so you can see them. We've got 0, 0, I'll write quite small. We've got 2, 2, we've got 3, 3, we've got 5, 5, okay, minus 2, minus 2, and so on. So what do all of those coordinates have in common? It's that the x part and the y part are equal. Okay, so 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4 would go there, look, 5, 5, 6, 6. The y part is the same as, so equals, the x part. So a perfect 45 degree diagonal line is called y equals x, and it's because all of the coordinates on that line have the same x and y parts. If I go want to go backwards and do sort of the opposite diagonal line, okay, if we have a look at some of the coordinates on this line, that would be minus 5, 5, okay. This one would be minus 2, 2. This one is 2, minus 2. This one down here, look, would be 6, minus 6. Can you guess what the rule is that links those coordinates together? Okay. They're almost matching, but not quite. The rule is, is that they've got the same number, but one of them is positive and one of them is negative. Okay, so instead of 5, 5, it's minus 5, 5. And instead of 2, 2, it's minus 2, 2. Okay, so not as nice as the red line I drew, where they were exactly the same. This one, they're almost exactly the same, except they're opposite signs. And so that line is called y equals minus x. So that covers horizontal lines, vertical lines, and the two diagonals that go through zero. But how do you draw other graphs anywhere you like, any straight line at any angle going through any number? Well, for those, you'll need a, a set of numbers to use and a table to fill in and an equation that tells you how to fill in the table. Okay, so if you put a side head in them, which is using a table to generate coordinates. So this is using a table to work out what coordinates to use. Okay, so what I've got is an equation and it says that y equals x plus 3. In other words, if I want to work out the y bit of the coordinate, I should add 3 to the x bit of the coordinate. And all you do in this table is put these numbers, these x numbers, into the formula one at a time. So I start by doing 0, add 3, and I get the answer 3. Okay. Then I get rid of that, 
and I do it again, but this time I do 1. Add 3, I put 1 there instead, okay? Because I know the x number I want to use, I'm trying to work out the y number. So 1 add 3 is 4, okay? If I change that to a 2, so the next one is 2, 2 add 3 is 5, and you might be able to see a pattern here, okay? Get rid of that. 3 add 3 is 6, and then 4 add 3 is 7. Okay, and there is a pattern in the numbers, it goes up in ones, the y values go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And what we do then is we convert the table into coordinates, and it's not anything like as hard as you'd think. Okay, so if you've printed out a sheet of these, then cut one and stick it in your book. Or if you haven't, then just draw out a set of axes like that, okay? So it goes up to 4 on the x-axis and it goes up to 10 on the y-axis. And what we do, we take each coordinate or each set of values. So where it says 0, 3, what that means is 0, comma, 3. So none across and 3 up. So that goes there. This one means 1, comma, 4. So it goes there. This one would be 2 comma 5, so it goes there, then we've got 3 6, then we've got 4 7, and if we've done this properly and your axis is nicely spaced, that should make a perfect straight line, okay, that goes up in ones. And the name of the line is the equation we started with, so y equals x plus 3, okay. So this is how you use a table and an equation to draw a line on a graph. Okay. Let's have a look at another one. So if you need to pause the video, you'll need to write down the equation and make a table. Okay, same table as last time. So pause the video and when you're ready, press play. This time the equation is telling us to do something different to x. Now this is algebra. So if 2 and x are joined together, what it means is 2 times x okay we don't have a time sign in algebra so we just stick them together so this time whatever x is we're going to double it we're going to times it by 2 so what is 2 times 0 well that's 0 what is 2 times 1 2 what is 2 times 2 4 what is 2 times 3 6 and what is 2 times 4 8 and then same axes so if you've got a printed cut and stick it in if you haven't you'll need to draw it's a bit of a pain having to draw fresh axes every time okay 0 0 is the origin down there look where the axes start from 1 2 2 4 3 6 4 8 if we kept going the next one would be 5 10 okay and join them up look and as long as your axes are good and as long as you've been careful plotting your coordinates you should get a perfect straight line again and this time the equation we used was y equals 2x and you'll notice that this graph is steeper than the first graph because it's going up in twos and the one we did before was only going up in ones we call that the gradient okay it's a posh word for how steep the graph is so if it goes up in threes that's steeper than going up in twos. It's got a bigger gradient. Okay, so if you notice a pattern in the numbers and you can see what they're going up in, that's the gradient is how you measure the steepness of a line. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, with positive values. We'll have a go at some negative values in a minute. Okay, this time we've got to do two things to x. We're going to double it two times x and we're going to add 1. So if it was a number machine it would look like this. First of all we're going to double whatever x is, then we're going to add 1 and the answer that we get is our y coordinate. So we're going to do double 0, add 1, which is 1. Double 1 is 2, add 1 makes 3. Double 2 is 4, add 1 makes 5. Double 3 is 6, add 1 is 7, and double 4 is 8, add 1 makes 9. 
And then if we plot them, we've got 0, 1, first of all, look, 1, 3, 2, 5, 3, 7, 4, 9. It's almost exactly the same as the one we've just done, except this time, instead of starting from 0, we're starting from 1. Okay, so down here, look. The last time it went up in twos this one goes up in twos as well look it goes up in twos but this time we're starting from one this is worth knowing this is called the y intercept where we cross the y axis okay it looks like it's where the graph starts but actually this graph goes on forever in both directions so it's called the y intercept when it's going up in twos look we call that the gradient and the way we would show it on the graph is to draw a little triangle and say that each little triangle between the coordinates is too high so like a little set of stairs so for this graph we would say that the gradient is two because each coordinate goes up in twos and the y intercept is one because it started from one okay so there's two things you might want to start sort of thinking about maybe when you're drawing graphs how steep the graph is which is gradient and where does it begin or where does it cross the y-axis okay so there's a third graph there now then we're going to make it slightly more difficult now okay so our equation this time is not x plus 10 or x take away 10 it's I've switched it around it's 10 take away x pause the video if you need to draw the table okay when you're ready press play so this time we always start with 10 and we take away whatever x is so first of all we're going to do 10 take away 0 which is 10 then we do 10 take away 1 which is 9 okay so look we always start with 10 and we take away a different amount every time the next one is 10 take away 2 then 10 take away 3 10 take away 4 and you can see a pattern again look this time the numbers are going down in ones and if I plot them here we go 10 9 8 7 if my little boy was you would love this 6 and if you kept going go 5 4 3 2 1 all the way down to 0 and keep going and this time we've got a graph that goes down okay it's if I draw the steps on look like if I showed you the gradient with steps this time the steps are going down in one so we would say it's got a gradient of minus one this time because it's going down and it's going down in steps of one and you can see that in the table as well look take away one take away one take away one okay so if I was going to write down the gradient this time the gradient would be minus one and where does it cross the y-axis at 10 so we could say that the y-intercept is 10 okay now for the next one we're going to do some minus numbers as well so it's a slightly different table it's still an easy equation so just looking at the table to start with we've got lots of values of x this time because we've got some minus ones as well and the rule says the equation says that we're going to do x so the number on the top row and just add one very simply whatever the number is add one now remember on a number line or a thermometer adding if you draw it like this adding goes up okay so adding goes up and taking away goes down so if I'm on minus three and I add one I get to minus two if I'm on minus 2 and I add 1, my answer is minus 1. If I'm on minus 1 and I add 1, I get to 0. 0 add 1 is 1. 1 add 1 is 2. 2 add 1 is 3. And 3 add 1 is 4. Okay. And what you'll need this time to draw this is all four quadrants of a graph okay and again I'll put these up you can print them and stick them in your book if you want to save a bit of time rather than drawing them all the time okay so be really careful plotting these minus 3 minus 2 means go left to minus 3 and down to minus 2 so the first one is there 
Then we've got minus 2 minus 1, which is there. Then we've got go left to minus 1, but don't go up and down, so minus 1, 0. Then 0, 1. 1, 2. 2, 3. 3, 4. And if I've done this properly and my axes are nicely drawn, they line up perfectly. And that equation would be y equals x plus 1. Okay, the equation that I used when I was filling out the table was y equals x plus 1. Okay, so it's getting quite tricky now. Okay, so be really careful with your minus numbers. Be very careful drawing your graph. Make sure it's all equally spaced. Use the grid of your book. Or even better, if you've got a printer, just print out from the sheet I've put on with this lesson and just cut and stick and it'll save you a lot of time. Okay. Okay, how many more have we got? It might just be this one. Two more. Okay. This time then, what does the equation tell us to do? We're going to double x. Okay, so x times 2, and then we're going to take away 1. So if I double minus 3, I get minus 6. If I take away another 1, I actually end up on minus 7. Okay. If I double minus 2, I get minus 4. And if I take away one more than that, I actually end up on minus 5. Remember, taking away goes down. If it was a thermometer, it gets colder. If I double minus 1, I get minus 2. And if I'm on minus 2 and I take away another one, that's minus 3. <clears throat> if I double 0, I get 0. But if I take away 1, I get minus 1. If I double 1... I get 2, but when I take away 1, I end up on 1. When I double 2, I get 4, but if I take away 1, I've really only got 3. And if I double 3, I get 6, and if I take away 1, I end up on 5. And you can probably see in the numbers that they're going up in 2s, okay? So that tells me that the gradient is going to be 2 when I draw this. Okay, so let's get it plotted. now. I can't fit on the first coordinate. I don't go down to minus 7. So I'll just skip any that don't fit. And I'll join up what I've got that does fit. So we've got 2 minus 5. I can, sorry, minus 2 minus 5. I can put that one on. That goes down there. Then I've got minus 1 minus 3. So that's there. Remember, you go across first and then down. Then I've got 0 minus 1. So that goes there. Then I've got 1, 1, 2, 3, and 3, 5. And if I've done this properly, it'll make a dead straight line. Like that, look. There we go. And really, it would carry on. Look down there. That would have been the coordinate I didn't draw, minus 3, minus 7. Make sure you label your line. So it was 2x, take away 1. Does it have a gradient of 2 if I draw the steps on? Yeah. Okay, so the steps are going up in 2s like they were in the table. My y-intercept, look, by there, where does it cross the y-axis? The y-intercept is minus 1. Okay. And we'll do one more then before I leave you to have a go at some on your own. I appreciate you've probably been sitting doing this video for a long time already. Okay, last one then. So whatever x is, all we've got to do is take away 3. Okay, so we take those numbers, remember, and all we're going to do is take away 3. Now I'm going to put a number line on here. So 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. I'm going to keep going down because I'm going to need to go a bit lower than that. Minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. Now, remember, taking away goes down. Adding goes up. And we are taking away, so we're going down the number line. Okay, start on minus 3, which is there. If we take away 3, where do we end up? Minus 6. If we start on minus 2 and take away 3, we end up on minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and finally 0. 
And can I plot these on my graph? If I move it up a bit, probably. So oh, it's going to overlap my numbers, I think, if I go too far. OK, minus 3, minus 6. I can fit that on. I've got that one. Minus 3, minus 6 is there. Minus 2, minus 5. OK. Minus 1, minus 4. That's there. OK, and I think I can see these now. So 0, minus 3. 1 minus 2, 2 minus 1, 3, 0. Okay, it would keep going. It would eventually go positive if I kept going. There's my line. Look, I'll just draw a little bit extra just to show that it does actually carry on forever and it goes down there forever as well. So our equation is y equals x minus 3. And then just before I finish, the gradient goes up in ones so if i draw the little steps on you can see it's going up in ones and the y intercept where does it cross the y axis the y intercept is minus three okay and what i'd like you to do i'm going to set some equations for you to try on your own so you can either print your own graph paper or print graph paper and use it or you can draw your own axes but you'll need to make a table okay Fill in the table using the equation, then plot the coordinates and join them up. If it's not a straight line, something's gone wrong. It might be that your axes are not spaced properly. It could be that you've drawn your coordinates in wrong, or it might be that you've worked something out wrong in the table. You'll have to check your workings really carefully if they don't make a straight line. Okay.